evaluate the following triple integral and spherical coordinates. So this one is nice, it's all set up for us, so we can immediately go ahead and start evaluating. So I identify the inner integral, and we're going to pull that out and evaluate it. So we want to evaluate the inner integral here, which is with respect to rho. So we have the integral from 0 to 3 cos cant of phi of rho squared sine of phi d rho. So our variable here is rho, so we can even pull this sine of phi to the outside of that integral if you would like, since it's held constant. So this is phi, uh, sine of phi from 0 to cosecant of phi of rho squared d rho. And so this integrates to sine of phi multiplied by rho cubed over 3. And we're going to evaluate now from 0 to 3 cosecant of phi. And so when we plug this in, this is going to be sine of phi by 3 multiplied by 3 cosecant of phi cubed. So 3 cubed gives us 27 cosecant cubed, or cosecant of phi cubed. And then we'll have minus 0. And so let's see, we can simplify this. We can see 3, of course, goes into 27 9 times, leaving us with 9 times sine of phi, cosecant of phi cubed. And so let's think about our trig identities here. We can rewrite sine as 1 by cosecant of phi multiplied by cosecant of phi cubed. So this cosecant in the denominator cancels one of the cosecants in the numerator, leaving us with 9 cosecant of phi squared, which as, is as simplified as we can go and is a general antiderivative. Woohoo! So we can plug this back in to now go ahead and evaluate the middle integral. So our middle integral is with respect to phi, so we have the integral from pi by 6 to pi by 4 of 9 cosecant squared of phi d phi. And so again, this is a general antiderivative. So this integrates to 9 multiplied by cotangent, negative cotangent of phi from pi by 6 to pi by 4. So as we head into evaluating here, I want you to recall that we know cotangent of phi is equivalent to cosine of phi by sine of phi. So sometimes it can be easier to evaluate using a trig identity like this instead of evaluating into cotangent. But of course, if you know your cotangent evaluations, go for it. So I have negative 9 multiplied by cosine of pi by 4 all over sine of pi by 4. And we're subtracting cosine of pi by 6 all over sine of pi by 6. And we can simplify. So we have, this is negative 9 multiplied by, you have the square root of 2 by 2 in the numerator all over, square root of 2 by 2 in the denominator, so this cancels to 1. And then evaluating at pi by 6, we have cosine of pi by 6 gives us the square root of 3 by 2, and that's all divided by 1 half. And so we can simplify, and again, this first term all goes to 1. We know, of course, fractions in the denominator will flip. So I have negative 9 multiplied by 1 minus the square root of 3 by 2 multiplied by 2 by 1. So the 2 in the numerator and denominator cancel each other right out, leaving us with negative 9 multiplied by 1 minus the square root of 3, and there's nothing wrong with this. If you don't like that negative in the front, you could distribute that 9 and rewrite this as 9 
times the square root of 3 minus 9. Right, so equivalently we can say that this is 9 multiplied by the square root of 3 minus 1. Either of these three equivalent forms is perfect. But don't forget, we still have one more to go. This is just our middle integral. So we can plug this back in and evaluate the outer integral. So we have the outer integral from 0 to 2 pi of 9 multiplied by the square root of 3 minus 1 d theta, which is very cute. We are just left with 9 times the square root of 3 minus 1 multiplied by theta from 0 to 2 pi. So we have 9 multiplied by the square root of 3 minus 1, and we're evaluating 2 pi minus 0, which leaves us with a beautiful final answer of 18 pi multiplied by the square root of 3 minus 1. And this is our final answer here.